Hi, welcome to FedScoop TV. I'm Billy Mitchell, and today I'm here with Tom Sasalva, Chief Data Officer at the U.S. Army. Tom, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing fantastic. Awesome. Today we're here at Dell Technologies Digital Transformation Summit. It's a, it's a big buzzword. We want to kind of digest that and try to figure out exactly what that means to you and the Army today and across the federal government. Um, and an easy way to jump into that is our first question, and it's just what does digital transformation look like today in 2017? Well, so for the Army, I got to be honest with you, it has changed over the last couple of years. So, you know, we've been trying to, what I would call, digitify the battlefield for quite a while now, right? And so we had uh, every soldier as a sensor was a, was a kind of a phrase we used for a while, and we're still marching down that path. Now it's more focused, I think, on um, creating more interoperability, uh, not only, uh, you know, inside the Army, which generally speaking, we are interoperable, but with our, our partners and the other military departments, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, as well as our coalition partners. So we're really struggling uh, to, to make sure that we create an environment wherever that might be, whether we're you know uh, in a conflict in Afghanistan or whether we're supporting Harvey, which we just uh, did, mm -hmm. right? That we are interoperable with whomever we're working with. So in the Harvey case, it was actually interesting because we deployed a bunch of uh, tactical networking equipment that was intended not necessarily for natural disasters um, to support the Harvey awesome. effort. And it was actually uh, uh, amazingly successful, right? So we were able to interact with the local law enforcement, uh, the, the National Guard, and as well as the other folks at uh, Red Cross and whatnot that were helping. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we're really trying to do is this adapt and pivot model to move from the traditional kind of stovepipe mechanisms that we were in before and adopt more modern technology, more open, what I'll call commercial standard technology, right? So using radios that are commercial off the shelf and adapting them for our purposes, yeah. maybe changing our business processes or adapting their software for our, our specific needs rather than building something from scratch purpose built for sure. us that may not be as flexible or as resilient as we would need it to be. So, Yeah, that makes sense. Today we talk a lot about, uh, in digital transformation, people might think there's a silver bullet, they point to cloud a lot, things like that. There's, a, again, a lot of big buzzwords, but we know that's not true. Um, but if there was a sort of goal post that you could t point people towards agencies that need a little extra help, if there was a direction you would say they should start chipping away in, um, what might that be so that they can start to revolutionize the way they do business? Yeah, so I really think the, uh, uh, what I used to say this back when I did my previous agency was the commercialization of the enterprise, right? So people want the flexibility at work that they have at home, right? Mm -hmm. So the digital transformation that we're trying to engage is, is empower the end user to do what the end user needs to do with as few barriers as possible, right? So if that is a soldier in the field, give them a mobile device that they can do their work on. If it is a, you know, a knowledge worker, an office worker, empower them with the applications to make them most productive. Um, so movement to the cloud or, or you know, what I would characterize as moving your on-premise workloads to an off-premise location is definitely something that I think uh, the, what I'll call the traditional agency should be looking into. Uh, the Army as a generating force is certainly going in that way. The, uh, the operational force of the people that are downrange tactical guys, it's a little bit more challenging yep. because of the disconnected, disadvantaged sort of uh, communication links. So a lot of the modern cloud technologies and the, you know, the 365s and this kind of stuff are built based on broadband, always on sort of connectivity. So we're really working heavily with the vendor community to kind of say, how can we still get the flexibility of that model um, while not being connected all the time, right? <laughs> so, uh, and we actually experienced this, uh, again, I mentioned Harvey earlier, uh, but uh, it was interesting to see the dichotomy there between the, you know, the traditional workforce that kind of got pulled out of their, their comfort zone, right? Mm -hmm. um, and put in an environment that is, uh, relatively speaking, austere, right? From a technology perspective, you're seeing it in Puerto Rico right now, you're seeing it in the, in the Texas area as well. So um, I would say focus on the things that matter to your end users. Um, uh, if you don't already have one, get a user group together of your users and say, mm -hmm. what do you need to do your job better? Uh, don't uh, ask a technologist or technology people <laughs> what technology yeah. uh, I should use. One. Right. Um, uh, so as a technologist, you know, we're, we're usually chasing shiny objects in some regard. Um, but uh, the end users really know what they need, need to be uh, efficient and effective. And so find those kind of uh, um, those thought leaders inside your user group and, and use them as a catalyst to uh, do your digital transformation. Yeah. So. How, do, how does policy and legislation kind of play into this? We hear a lot about the White House IT modernization memo right. that came out recently, the MGT Act that's currently moving through Congress. Um, they all sound great, but it, are those things going to really help uh, agencies in terms of moving away from legacy systems to modern systems? So I think, uh, so 
yes, they will help. I mean, they certainly won't hurt, uh, you know, compared to some of the other policies and legislation that we have. Uh, but uh, on the flip side, you know, it, it, they are an unfunded mandate, as it were, right? So uh, they give us a top cover that we need to do our job, and we say, hey, we want to move to the cloud, or hey, we want to modernize this system. People are saying, why do you want to do that? I'm happy with the way it is. Yeah. Well, you know, we've been asked by the president or Congress or whomever, or the Secretary of Defense, for example, uh, to move in this direction. Uh, but again, if you have a good working relationship with your users, uh, in many cases, they probably want to see these changes as well. Um, you know, our challenge as IT professionals really is, how do we speak in their language, right? Yeah. Not be, oh, I just moved to the cloud, kind of uh, parroting some, you know, marketing or whatever, say, well, this is the advantages to you by doing this. Uh, so I, I view, generally speaking, uh, the, the, these legislation policy guidance documents coming from above to be useful and helpful as a guidepost, right? Uh, we can't, there's no straight line really to any of yeah. this stuff. You kind of got to choose your own path based on what you have. Um, and for us, in large part, it's resource driven, right? Yeah. Uh, the Army is a very large organization, so doing anything to the Army just takes time because of sheer physics, right? Um, and so we have a finite amount of money and you can only do so many things at one time, right? So uh, that's really, uh, I think if, you know, the, the at one point there was a proposed modernization fund, right? That mm -hmm. could be very useful, especially for some of the smaller agencies who don't have large sure. IT budgets. Uh, I don't know where that is in, in, in Congress and okay. the Senate, um, but I would like to see that come to fruition, certainly to help out some of our partners. So. And to close out, you, you touched on this a little bit earlier in, in making you know, commercializing the way you interact with uh, the people on the battlefield using their devices, but how important is it uh, for government agencies all around to make the way they interact with their constituents and the users within their agencies uh, like they do every day in the private sector? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's really, really important to make, make sure you stay connected with the people that is your target demographic, whatever that might be. Uh, you know, so for, for us, it, for me anyway, it's the soldiers in the field yep. and the people that they are supporting, right? Uh, for other agencies, say like FCC, for example, they legitimately have the American population mm -hmm. as their constituency. Um, and so how do you stay connected with them? How do you stay on top of what they really need, right? Uh, and what we found uh, in, in our case studies, we, we've done a couple of these before, is really when, when you ask people what they want, you get kind of the polar extremes. You don't really get a median yeah. answer. So you have to be able to analyze the data and stay connected with a, a broad cross section of your constituency, whatever that might be. Um, and so if you have some forward leaning IT people that are, are also end users, they're probably going to give you a vastly different answer than uh, not so IT savvy people. So uh, maintaining that and being able to do that, uh, that analytical thought and our critical thinking skills on top of that data sure. say, hey, well, you know, they might have said this, but I, we really think this is what they need. And then go back to them and say, hey, this is what we heard. This is our analysis. What do you think? Right. And bringing the, the, the other thing that I found is bringing them together. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you don't just ask this person and yeah. ask this person independently, putting them in a room together, no speaking or physically right um, and having them hear each other's sides of the story is yeah. uh, critically important to actually getting that diversity um, and so diversity breeds creativity right? yeah so uh, that's definitely the, the, the one thing that I would say about that so awesome Tom that's all I have for you thanks for joining us today. awesome thanks for having me I'm Billy Mitchell of Fed Scoop TV thanks for watching